Okay, I'm back and uh, making a third video today uh, about the uh, dining scene in Cape May. I made a video a few days ago, about four days ago, on the fine dining uh, scene in Cape May. And two days ago, I followed that up with uh, a video about uh, the casual dining scene in Cape May. And on this video, I want to uh, talk a little bit about what I consider the sort of bistro um, dining scene in Cape May. Uh, as I indicated on my two previous videos, uh, these are not scientific classifications by any stretch of the imagination. So when I say bistros, I'm talking about small, uh, small restaurants, none of which serve alcohol, and very unpreten unpretentious, um, you know, decor uh, in, in the restaurant. But nevertheless, good meals. And in fact, as I mentioned on my uh, video a few days ago about the casual dining scene in Cape May, uh, these, these small bistros are actually the ones that my wife and I frequent the most. And it is our preference. And uh, it's a very intimate dining scene. Um, Oftentimes, you strike up conversations with fellow diners, um, find out wh you know where they're from, what brings them to town, you know what your background is, where where you live, if you have a place down here, uh, what they're seeing. Uh, if you're if you're local and they're not, they ask for some recommendations on things to do. So it's a pretty nice uh, dining experience, and the food is pretty good. I mean. I would say the food is um, every bit as good as any of the casual dining, um, as any of the casual dining restaurants that I mentioned, and it's at about the same price point. Uh, I would say entrees typically are from the, uh, you know, high twenty dollars, like twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty dollars, up to uh, forty dollars for an entree. Uh, appetizers probably are roughly you know 12 to 15 dollars per per appetizer and uh, and desserts are are probably about 10 to 12 dollars so you probably could spend 60 to 70 dollars per person um, I'm sorry you probably spend uh, let's see 30 40, probably 50 to 60 dollars per person uh, in any of these uh, little bistros that I'm going to talk about on this video. The first one that I want to mention is directly across the street from me that we're looking at right now. It's Frida's Cafe. Um, this is uh, 210 Ocean uh, Ocean Street. It's at the very end of the uh, Washington Street Mall, or off the mall, as you can see. It's um, off of Carpenter's Lane. And uh, it's a former bank, but it's... Um, it's a, a very nice little bistro that we come to uh, often when we want uh, non-seafood. Now they do serve seafood here, I'm not trying to say that they do not, uh, but we have sort of our favorite bistro to go to for seafood, uh, and I'll show that in a few minutes. But this is Frida's Cafe, um, very, uh, very nice little bistro to go to if you're looking for someplace intimate. Probably not the best place to go with kids. None of these would be the best place to go with kids. Um, one thing about Frida's that I should mention in the spirit of full disclosure is, and this, this could be a turnoff to people, and I understand that because it was to me at first, but uh, we managed to uh, get around it. There's no bathroom in, in Frida's. You actually have to exit the restaurant and walk alongside here down to where that door is, where you see the uh, the uh, white little white building, and there's a door between Frida's Cafe and the little white building, and you go back, and there's a bathroom back there. So you have to actually get the key from this place and exit the restaurant and walk down to, uh, I guess it's about 20 yards, 25 yards, and then go back into that little alley, and there's a there's a bathroom there, and it's clean. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that bathroom. It's just the only bad part about it is that you actually literally have to get up and exit the exit the restaurant to go to it, which, in the dead of winter, is not the uh, 
not the most ideal thing. <clears throat> so it's uh, it's about two uh, two twenty five two thirty on uh, on Monday, and I'm in Cape May, obviously, as you can see, and uh, I just want to cover these, these f there are five of them that I want to talk about. Frida's was one. And I, I guess I could, I could show and, and talk about these from anywhere. I don't necessarily need to be riding over in Cape May to do that. But I think it's nice to, um, to be riding around town and give any viewers of these videos some additional <clears throat> additional scenes. This is Marion Inn, which I talked about as a fine dining establishment. And the next, uh, the next little bistro that I want to uh, identify on this ride is Luis's, Luis's Cafe. Um, many of these are actually named a cafe. Uh, and these names, bistro and cafe, and you know, they all have different connotations depending upon where you're from. Um, cafes oftentimes connote like a little coffee shop. Uh, but uh, these are what I would characterize as bistros. Congress Hall to my left. And I'm now at the other end of the, uh, the Washington Street Mall. I'm going to pull over here and show Luis's Cafe, which is right there. It's the uh, the yellow building. It's uh, 104 Jackson Street. This uh, this this restaurant goes back 40 years. Uh, initially owned by um, a couple by the name of Luis uh, Luisa and um, Doug, and about I don't want to say I guess five six years ago. They sold the place and moved to Montana, and the person that bought it was a guy named Will Riccio, who um, actually worked at Luis's as a, as a teenager, as a dishwasher, and now owns it. And, you know, to anybody that is familiar with the food service industry, you know that it is a very competitive, very tough um, business in which to succeed. But Luis's is, is very intimate and uh, primarily focusing on seafood and farm-to-table produce. And they found a real winning uh, formula, and Will has uh, done an outstanding job of maintaining that and actually uh, enhancing a little bit without destroying some of the... Um, some of the uh, things that and the intimacy 
that made it the success that it was under Louisa and, and Doug. And as you can see, there's no outside dining uh, opportunity for Louisa's because of its size. This guy does not seem to be in any rush. And I think I'll pull over here just to show again whenever I pass by here to give a view of the uh, foot traffic on the mall. Give you a sense for how crowded it is. This is Delaney's, I mentioned that, as one of the uh, casual dining establishments. So that's our two favorite uh, bistros within Cape May. Frida's and Luis's. Then the other three that I want to show in this video are actually located in West Cape May. But I think it's it's a distinction between Cape May and you know West Cape May that is lost on tourists and things. Some very pretty homes along here. I'm on uh, Jackson Street. This is the uh, the Ebbett Room in the Virginia, which I showed before, the Mad Batter. Coming up on my right is some homes that you see here. They're referred to as the Seven Sisters. And actually what you're looking at is the rear of these buildings. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll ride into this street to show the, uh, the front of them. So these, these uh, cottages are referred to as the Seven Sisters, the two that I'm looking at right now and the five off to my right. One is green, one is blue, one is, I guess, uh, sort of gray, a pink one, and a brown one. And as you can see, these five off to my right have identical architecture, and the two uh, white ones here initially were of the same exact architecture so these seven were identical these two have since undergone since they were built undergone some improvements in construction but these seven buildings are referred to as the seven sisters a lot of times people confuse them with uh, the Stockton cottages which are also uh, identical in architecture and they're on Gurney Street. I'll show that in some other video, some other ride, but as long as I was coming down Jackson Street, I thought I would turn in and just show the uh, Seven Sisters because you don't see the, uh, you don't see the front of them from Jackson Street. You actually have to turn in that little Atlantic Terrace.
pretty nice day. Um, it's a little overcast. Not too hot. So as I said, I'm going to head right back over to um, West Cape May to show the other three, um, the other three bistros. So I hope uh, my intent in these videos is to hopefully uh, give some viewers an idea of what town is like in addition to being a little informative. I'm on Grand Street, you can see some beautiful homes here. I'm coming up on West Perry Street here and Park Boulevard. When I cross West Perry, I'm out of Cape May and into West Cape May. And I'm coming up on um, Seashore Road, as I mentioned many times. Railroad turns into Seashore, and Seashore turns into Broadway. And I guess, actually, technically, this is Broadway. But uh, the next little bistro that I wanted to profile is right across the street, and it's called Bella Vita Cafe. Actually, it's called Bella Vita Garden Cafe. And uh, it has the most beautiful uh, little garden setting in the rear of this place that is uh, really really nice and very off the beaten track um, 
never really crowds here. We've always gotten a seat right away. The food is good. It's priced, as I said. Um, and uh, in terms of the, um, I guess, the, the outdoor setting, especially in times of COVID, I would have to say that Bella Vida has the nicest uh, outdoor seating of any restaurant, uh, fine dining or otherwise. It's, it's a really, really nice little garden cafe in the back. You can't really appreciate it from this vantage point, um, but it's, it's there. So that's, that's the third one. The fourth one that I wanted to profile, which I've talked about before, and I would hesitate to call this a bistro. It's Panico's. It's right across the street from me, the large gray church building. Uh, you know, this is, in my view, probably more appropriate just as a uh, casual uh, restaurant. But since they identify themselves as a bistro, uh, I thought I should sort of uh, include them in this. Uh, this is the uh, place that my wife and I favor when we have our grandchildren. Um, it's good cuisine, good, uh, good meals, good prices, um, very kid-friendly uh, inside. You don't have to worry about your kids, uh, you know, being a little, uh, a little bit noisy. But it's a very nice place. And they have outdoor dining in the rear as well. And the last bistro that I want to talk about, which is, again, I, one that I've identified previously, but including it in this video as a sort of compilation of what my wife and I consider to be bistros is this uh, place right across the street from me here. It's uh, called Backstreet Simply Delicious. And like the others, it's, uh, it's a very small, intimate dining. Um, Very small, intimate dining. They do not serve alcohol. Uh, let me pull it over here. Um, I think they they serve all kinds of cuisine here, but I mean it's American cuisine, but uh, it's. You can see, well, you probably can't see on the video, but a lot of uh, what you would t typically think of as Italian uh, meals in here. But um, this is, to us, a uh, another little bistro. So that's the last one that I wanted to profile on this on this ride. So the, again, just to sort of summarize, the five uh, bistros that I would identify, or the five uh, establishments that I would identify as bistros, would be Frida's, Luis's, Frida's Cafe, Luis's Cafe, Bella Vida Cafe. Panico's Bistro, and Backstreet Simply Delicious. And I think uh, if you see this video and you're looking for a little uh, intimate uh, place to dine, get good meals, uh, prices that are comparable to what you would pay in any of the uh, casual dining establishments that I mentioned, less than fine dining, but 
comparable to casual dining. Um, they are all BYO. None of them have a liquor license. So you're not going to be paying significant upcharges on, on the liquor. Uh, and, you know, the only thing I could say that I guess would be a little bit of a negative is, other than Panico's, I don't know that they're the best place to go with a family with small kids. So I'm going to head back over to North Cape May now. I hope these videos, uh, I know the season is over for 2020, but I guess it's my hope that, uh, well, my, my hope is that, you know, somebody uh, at some point down the road finds these videos either useful or enjoyable. Uh, I make them primarily for my own benefit. As I mentioned years ago, I enjoy when I'm not down here, logging onto my YouTube account from outside of Philadelphia, my home outside of Philadelphia, and watching uh, videos of the, uh, the area down here makes me uh, look forward to getting back down. This is the road here that goes over to Higby Beach, which uh, I will make a video of that at some point in the not too distant future. Riding back to North Cape May via Jonathan Hoffman Road here, or Jonathan Hoffman Boulevard. This road runs along the canal uh, on the, um, you know, not not on the Cape Island side of the canal, but off the uh, off the island. Here on my right is uh, one of the wineries that I mentioned on a video years ago, uh, profiling 
the uh, local wineries. This one is called Turdo. You can see the vineyard there uh, off to my right. And right there is the entrance to Turdo Vineyards and Winery. And I think I'll turn into this uh, North Cape May Shopping Center and end this video uh, outside the uh, Gusto uh, Brewery. As I mentioned uh, on an earlier video, uh, Cape May Brewery uh, started probably about 10 years or so ago and has been enormously successful. And uh, I talked about that in the video riding around uh, North Cape May and uh, Lower Township but this is one of the uh, breweries that sort of sprouted up probably in response to the uh, enormous success of Cape May Brewery and it's pretty good this is uh, within walking distance of my wife and I's home down here so we come over here and uh, you know enjoy sitting here and having a drink and you know, it's usually got a pretty good crowd at night. So that's it. That's uh, that's all I wanted to capture on this video. Again, this was uh, a video intended to capture some additional scenes in Cape May uh, and identify some of the uh, bistros that are, as again, are actually uh, my wife and I's favorite places to go. We frequent them more than we do any of the other uh, fine dining or casual dining establishments. So I uh, hope this was helpful, and I hope, if nothing else, uh, you got some additional scenes of town that you might not otherwise have seen if you're a visitor, like the, um, the Seven Sisters. Uh, you know, you saw the front of those buildings because on Jackson Street, what you're really seeing is the back of the homes, and a lot of people are not aware of that. So that's it. Uh, take care, and again, thanks for watching.